May I first of all remind you of some of the domestic arrangements. Uh, the WCs are situated outside the meeting room, outside the council chamber, uh, opposite the chairs. A cold water is also available in the breakout area outside of the council chamber. If the fire alarm should sound, can you please leave the meeting room by following the fire exit signs and can we meet on the Ipswich Town Football Club training pitch? Please do not re-enter the building until we are told it is safe to do so. Can I ask everyone please just to double check your mobile phones are on silent or switched off? And as we know, if they ring, it's a donation to the Chairman's Charity. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live via the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be filmed except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you'll be deemed by the Council to have consented to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The Council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not lawfully excluded. Finally, can members and officers please ensure that you do press the microphone when you speak and turn off when you finish, please. Uh, just some introductions, um, for, as we have uh, two members of the public present, just in case you're not aware of who will do what today. Uh, in front of myself, uh, I'm Councillor Matthew Hicks, and my colleagues on my right here at the front row, we are the uh, district councillors who will make a decision on the uh, applications before us today. In Mid-Suffolk District Council, if there is an application within your own ward, you may not vote. Therefore, you have to cross the chamber and sit on this side where we have another councillor present who will be able to speak on an application in their ward, but as I said, not vote. Um, on the far right, we have Ian Duprez, who's our legal advisor, and we have Gemma Walker, who's the area planning manager. Area planning manager. <laughs> uh, and we have uh, various support officers and uh, officers who will present, and they'll be introduced as they present the, various, uh, the two applications before us today. So I think that's dealing with all the technicalities. Um, when you do come up to speak, if you come to the front row, and you will have three minutes, and we have an egg timer here, and we do keep to the three minutes, please. So, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence and substitutions. Do we have any, please? Uh, none, Chair. Much. Um, do we need to receive any declarations of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest by members? Councillor Eburn. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to uh, make a, a non-pecuniary interest for item um, 7B. Um, I appreciate that this item is just a variation of conditions to do with cart lodges and garages, but due to my mother living dead opposite the site and being an objector, I think it would be better that I don't take part, that I make a non-pecuniary um, interest declaration and I don't take part in the um, vote for that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Chairman, C Councillor Eben did, did kindly warn me of this and I'm quite satisfied it's a non-pecuniary interest. But the councillor has decided it would be best if she doesn't vote on this item. So if you're not going to vote, I would suggest it's probably best not to take part in the debate as well. So you leave after the first item. Okay, thank you very much. Any other declarations of interest by members? No? Thank you very much. Next item is any declarations of lobbying by members? Apart from obviously Councillor Eburn on that item at home. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any declarations of personal site visit by members? You're, you're fine with that as a ward member, you would have, you would have done that, that's fine. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Item number five is confirmation of the minutes that was held on the 24th of July, 2019. Uh, these are in your papers, pages one to 12. I just run through them quickly, and if you have any points that you want clarified or need looking at, you can just raise your hand when we get to each page. So, starting off with our papers, page one, two, three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight, and nine, ten, and eleven. Can I sign those as a true record of the meeting? Is that agreed? Agreed? Thank you. I'll do that after the meeting. 
Okay, so back to the agenda. Uh, the next item is schedule of planning applications. The first item is uh, DC 19-01558, the bungalow. Sorry, Chair, we have petitions as well. Oh, did I miss out? Oh, I'm very sorry. Item number six, to receive notification of petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme. Do we have any? We do. Um, there's Thank you. one petition that has been received um, regarding the first application that members will be looking at today, um, and the petition summary reads as follows. To consider the attached petition signed by 47 residents of Thorn and Magna objecting to application number DC 1901558 for the construction of a bridge to provide vehicular access to the bungalow, the street, Thorn and Magna I, Suffolk IP 238HB, when deciding the outcome of this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. So the petition is received and noted. So thank you very much. Okay, so now we move on to the schedule of planning applications. Uh, and the first one is DC 19-01558, the bungalow in the street, Thorn and Magna, uh, near I. And who will be presenting this? Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Samantha Caviani, I'm one of the planning officers here. Uh, the proposal is uh, for a bridge um, to provide vehicle access to the bungalow in Thorn and Magna. As you can see, here is the site location plan showing the location of the application site within the village. Um, this also shows some constraints on site. Uh, we have a few great listed buildings um, nearby. Also, there is a group TPO to the north, and the application site is partially situated within the special landscape area. Heritage team were consulted, and they haven't raised any objections to the proposal. This is a flood map showing the application sizes again, partially situated within the flood zone, two and three. The smallest stream water, uh, water course is um, in fact River Dull, uh, but when it comes, arrives at the village to the north, uh, it becomes a small water course stream. Um, extensive FRA was submitted as part of the application and also the government's flood risk information identifies the risk in this locality as medium, meaning that each year it has a chance of flooding between 1% to 3.3%. Our flood officer was also consulted and he hasn't raised any objections to the proposal. Here is just the wider context of the site. The nearest settlement boundary is Thornham uh, Pava to the north. This is another area of photography showing the position of the site, application site, and also um, some landscape qualities that sur surround the site. This is the red line boundary showing the site and the scale of the site. This slide shows the location of the site and the proposal as well as the trees and vegetations on site. It is worth noting that uh, previously in 2006, uh, an application was approved for a bridge for the book house. The current proposal proposes to have access to the bungalow and the book house to the north. Although the uh, approval was over 10 years ago, I thought it was worth noting that there has been an approval on site. Currently, there is an access to the bungalow as a footpath, um, a footbridge. Vehicle access is to the north, some distance away, that serves the Brook House and a few other properties. There is currently no direct access to the bungalow or the Brook House. This engineering drawing shows the extent of the uh, construction as well as the materials proposed and the dimensions, and it is in accordance with good design. The proposed bridge would not act as a barrier, according to this drawing, in case of flooding or in case of passage for the water species that reside in the stream. There are similar examples of the bridge, not exactly the same, but similar examples that can be observed up and down the street 
on this side. This is again further details of the drawing, showing the technical engineering details. This slide shows uh, the extent of the trees and the hedges to be removed from the site, which is less than 10 meters to achieve visibility displays, access and visibility displays. As part of the application, the applicant has submitted an ecological report which identifies there are no protected <coughs> species on site, no nesting birds, amphibians, or any other protected species. Also, this shows the level of impact upon the street scene in terms of landscape qualities, and it is considered minimal. These are some images that were taken from the site, on site visit. The top one on the corner, the right corner shows the footbridge currently on site. The left image is the bungalow itself. And there is some street scene along the street. Some further images. Recommendation from offices is for approval as detailed within the report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions at this point? Yeah, Councillor Eburn first. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for that. Could you tell me how far the access, the road access to the north is from the proposed um, access, please, in, in metres? Thank you. In terms of metric measurements, I haven't measured it, but it's about three sites to the top. And the sites within the streets are, especially in this part of the street, quite generous size. Generous size so. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to go back to the slides. Sorry, bear with me. So the access is to the farmhouse, to the north, as you can see. Is it, is it visible? Uh, as I said, I haven't measured it in metric measures, so I'm not quite sure the exact uh, measurements of it. But if that's something that the councils wish me to do, that's something that we could perhaps. Is it a scale map you've got there? Um, it's not a scale, no, because then the, excuse me. We'll get someone to bring that up the actual scale drawing and then we can measure it rather than taking it off our drawings here which are obviously gone from A5 to A4 or is it A3 to A4 anyway but, but to be more accurate. Councillor Mansell. Thank you. Um, could you please um, indicate with a pointer or something on the aerial photograph of the site the existing vehicular and pedestrian accesses to the bungalow and the house just to the north of the bungalow, please, preferably on the aerial photograph. Would you be able to see it from there, or should I go there? Oh. I see. It's here. The current, the current axis is there. It's not from the access now. Um, there's an access, however, because of the mature trees and hedges on site, you won't be able to. But where's it run on that? Where's it run? Where's it, where is it? It's, it's here. So, so can, you, can you indicate with that, with that mouse thing, the pointer, 
uh, as if you were driving from the road to the bungalow, how would you get there? So you would start from wherever you start, for example, from here. You go up, and you get there's an access here at some point nearby. So then you drive back down, and then you get to the bungalow. Can you also indicate on that, on that aerial photograph where the pedestrian access is? Yes, there is a footbridge right opposite the bungalow, which is here. You're welcome. A couple of things. Just to make that clear, you're saying there's essentially a private track through through the properties adjacent to the bungalow on their side of the watercourse. Is that right? That's right. There's a there's a passage. There's a footpath. Uh, the input from the parish council, I think it was, were rather concerned about the number of trees that would be. Uh, removed to make the visibility splays. It wasn't totally clear to me whether their comments are correct or not. Uh, does the visibility display require significant trimming back of the uh, edges or not? Um, they have submitted an extensive agricultural report indicating that there's going to be removal of hedges and trees for about less than 10 metres to achieve visibility displays and access. And also, uh, the report that they have submitted shows the root protection area, and it also demonstrates that that won't be touched as part of the proposal. However, to have assurances and in the interest of amenity of the neighbors and the street, uh, we could propose conditions, uh, landscape conditions, for up to five years um, to ensure that whatever's lost could be replanted. Okay, so essentially the, the parish comments that there, there will be 90 metres of um, demolition of the existing vegetation is not right. Thank you. Thank you. But one other point, you mentioned that there are no species of, uh, in existence on this plot in any place. I find it a bit difficult to believe that uh, there are no species need protection whatsoever in a hedge of that size is is uh, is the um are you confident that the report is correct um the the report that has been submitted to us is uh in accordance with british standards um so yes we will accept that as that um and also what did we received um, shows the measures that can be imposed during, before, during, and after the construction to ensure that there will be no danger to the species or any nesting birds or amphibians that might exist there. But at the moment, it's uh, medium negative. That's the term that they used in the report. Any other questions? At this point, yeah, Councillor Mayor. Can you confirm that there is already a bridge of a similar construction uh, on, on, on the road? No, yes. In terms of exact engineering details, I won't be able to. As a planner and what we have to assess, yes, there are similar bridges along the street. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay, so we'll move on. Um, so we now move on to the Parish Council, first of all. Uh, and we have Jennifer Vaudry, if you'd like to come up. Uh, and we have the timer here. Sit, please. Do sit. And if you can push the, uh, the silver... Button with the map with the face on it. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, members. As an appointed officer, I'm here to speak on behalf of Thorn and Magna Parish Meeting. As I hope you already appreciate, 
Fauna Magna has a unique and to date largely unspoilt character. The lane through the centre of the village is charming, with no footpath, flanked by much treasured narrow river and historic Kanza or walkway, bordered by listed buildings. Residents enjoy this character and do not wish to see it spoilt by the introduction of this large and unsightly concrete monstrosity. There is an overwhelming opposition to this proposal from the village, which in 24 hours, 47 villages out of our population of 210 signed a petition against. We firmly believe that the erosion of this special character should not be allowed. The bridge is simply not necessary, as there is already an access bridge to the bungalow. Rather, it is a speculative developer's desire in order to maximise a profit as part of the likely redevelopment of the bungalow site. The proposal is not innocuous. It will impact he very heavily on the street and also the Kanza. This proposal will introduce another access at the narrowest point of the street where two cars can barely pass and it will be dangerous and will result in the loss of 90 metres of significant mature greenery, habitat and character which can contribute strongly to our lovely village. In a very recent inspector's report, in vehemently dis dismissing an appeal for seven new house houses a stone's throw away from this site, the inspector said, the Kanza is softened and screened by a largely unbroken belt of landscaping that contributes significantly to the street scene and the local distinctive quaint and rural character of the settlement. This setting is special. Please do not allow it to be spoilt with this insensitive 13.5 metre long industrial concrete structure that is inevitably designed to support a subsequent proposal for additional dwellings on the bungalow site. This may be the tip of the iceberg, but irrespective, this is damaging enough in its own right and, will impact, and the impact it will have. The village does not need or want this inappropriate and unnecessary bridge. We urge you to reject this ill-conceived and unsympathetic blight that a remote and opportunistic developer is seeking to impose upon us in the centre of our village. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions? For the I do have some supporting photos if anyone wants to see some recent uh, ones. They would have to have been submitted before. I did ask. I did ask yeah, before. And, and they have to be submitted before the meeting, oh. not rather brought to the meeting. So through when you when you put in your responses from the parish, right. that's really the time to submit those sorts Thank of things. You. Yes, Councillor you talk about 90 metres of trees, but we've been told that only 10 will be removed. Well, the, the splay of the bridge is 13.5 metres. So that's more than 10, isn't it? Yeah, but you talk of 90 metres. It is not a 90 metre strip, yes. So sorry, Chair, I'm confused. Yeah. It, it's not 10 metres. We, we've been told that 10 metres will be removed, and then we've heard that 90 metres are going to be removed. Yes. I'd, I'd just like to understand how many trees are going to be removed. So we, we'd just like some clarity that, um, that the parish meeting is saying there's 90 metres of hedgerow being impacted, and you're saying there's 10 metres. Could we just have clarity as to what, what the figure is? Because if the splay is 13 metres, is 10 metres accurate? That's the question. I believe that... Um the parish responded with regards to um, Suffolk Park and the standards and visibility displays. Uh, I believe that the figure came from that document uh, because nowhere in the submitted documents there has been any mention of 90 metres. So what is the accurate amount of hedgerow that will have to be taken out? From what I've submitted in the agricultural report is less than 10 metres. I've measured it myself. Any other questions for the... Yes, Councillor Field. Can, can one just point out that a visibility display starts at about two and a half metres deep at one end and disappears to about one centimetre deep the other end. So the number of trees you have to take down depending on where they are in the visibility display, and I'm not sure we've yet got a really good answer on that. Maybe slide 11... Hopefully we can get some clarity. Yeah, do you want to talk to us? Do you want to use the um, map? Uh, well, I think I'm asking for the 
Yeah. Is it started at 11 as well? Because the colour is not shown very well on there. And that's on page. And that's page 35 of your bundles. So in the darker blue, which we can see on the screen, are shown to be B category trees and hedges. And they include the root protection areas shown in red. In essentially the middle of the visibility display, if that's it in there, we've got a very pale blue colour, and that is shown as the tree hedges to be removed. So that is the difference between the two. Okay. So we can see it is, it is just that which area. Is, which you can see clearly on page 35 of the paper, yeah. so you can see the different colours. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not very visible on the screen, yeah. unfortunately. But yeah, on the members' papers, hopefully that clarifies exactly where we are talking about removal from. I think so. Uh, the distance is approximately 60 metres from the uh, nearest axis. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. We have no objector, no supporter or the applicant, but we do have the ward member, Council Warboys. Over to you. All right, thank you. Um, on the site location plan, House number 198, almost directly opposite the bungalow, is a listed building with early 16th century origins. It's within sight of the proposed bridge and its setting will be directly affected by the construction of the bridge and its associated visibility display. Houses 203, 204 on the end of the visibility display are timber framed and thatched. They're also listed and their setting will be affected. Admittedly, access to the bungalow at present is not straightforward over a single lane brick bridge with a semicircular arch and low brick parapet, then down the cancer, passing in front of Brook House before reaching the drive to the bungalow. This access has been allowed to overgrow, but it does exist and could be improved. At present, the buildings on the east side of the street are screened from the road, and this screening acts enormously to the rural character of Thorn and Mag Magna. It is particularly significant as the village is within a special landscape area, and also relevant to the settings of the three great two listed houses. From the Arboricultural Report, although none of the trees have been identified as worthy of tree preservation orders, they contribute positively to the overall character of the locality and are noted as Category 82 for their contribution to the mature leafy character of the street and for the closure and screening they provide. The walk along the Carnes is particularly attractive and valuable as an amenity resource. It is separated from traffic through the village physically by the watercourse, the River Dove, and visually by the diverse mix of vegetation. The street is at its narrowest at this point, barely room for two cars. And there's a little bit of confusion here. I think it's the 90 metres splay is from the centre of the bridge. So that makes a total of 180 metres of splay. That's my reading of it. Um, so 180 metres of vis visibility splay along one side would enhance visibility, but there would also be another vehicular access point. There is existing a small footbridge that leads directly to the bungalow. At present, this is discreetly sited amongst the trees. Would it be retained and consequently more visible as a result of the construction of the additional bridge, further compromising the setting of number 198? The scale of the construction of the bridge is constrained by the desire not to exacerbate the periodic flooding of the street by the River Dove. It is, however, visually a very stark 21st century intrusion. In conclusion, the existing access is perceived as constraining the potential use of the bungalow, and this proposal of a new bridge is seen as a solution. However, there is also the NPP requirement to conserve and enhance the historic environment, and the cumulative effects of this development should not be underestimated. The setting of three listed properties will be adversely affected, as would the unique character of Thorn and Magna within a special landscape area. Thank you very much for that. Um, 
Can I just, based on what you've raised, I've got a question I'd like to ask the case officer. So we hear about the special landscape area and we hear about the listed buildings. What is the heritage, can you just reconfirm heritage's view in terms of that impact and the bridge, please? Um, the Heritage Department have raised no objections. In fact, it provided no comments with regards to the uh, application. Um, may I also reiterate that um, Suffolk County Council Highways haven't raised any objections to the proposal. Um, and may I also note one more thing with regards to the removal of the shrub and the trees on site. If in a scenario someone was to remove these because they are not protected and they're not situated in the conservation area, it's not resisted by the council. The removal won't be resisted by council. So I just wanted to point this out that we have no control over that. So, so are you saying they can be removed whether there's a planning application or not? That's correct. Okay. So it's not actually something we could stop as a no. council even if they chose to do it tomorrow without a planning application? Okay. That's so the yes, even though it's a special landscape area, that doesn't matter? Um, no, it doesn't because, first of all, the site doesn't entirely, especially the, 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 the location where the bridge is proposed, is not within the landscape area, special landscape area. And I believe in this scenario, if we have some control over the site, it's a better option to not. Thank you. Okay, that's, I can see that's raised. Yes, Councillor Mansell and Councillor Field, that's going to raise more questions. Uh, thank you. Um, there, there's been a lot of talk about the cancer, both from the ward member and the parish meeting representative. Um, I'm assuming that the cancer is the like, parallel track to the road, and I'd like to ask, is it a public right-of-way, or is it only private access to the houses that are on that street? Uh, it is a public right of way, as, as I understand it. There is another further bridge which has a sign on it which says only um, pedestrian access, no um, vehicle access to the bungalow. Uh, so the three access points to the bungalow, one of which is only pedestrian access, and, and pedestrian access is all along the cancer, which I think was uh, coffin, translates as coffin way. So it's an ancient route through the village. Councillor Field. Thank you. The, um, uh, I, I was just looking at the list of consultees and I noticed that uh, uh, the map suggests that this bridge at certain times would be underwater, uh, that it floods in this area. And I don't see any response from the highways, uh, from the county floods team to say whether that's likely to exacerbate flooding issues or not. Thank you. No, we haven't had any responses despite consulting the Environment Agency twice. In fact, on two occasions we consulted them. Um, I did have a chat with the flood officer and he directed me to the government's website with regards to flooding information. And as I mentioned within the report and also presented just earlier, uh, the government flood risk information identifies that the risk in this locality is medium and also that the chance of flood flooding is between 1% to 3.3% each year. But is the county not the authority on those issues in this area? Um, that's correct and that's why we consult them and we consulted them twice on this occasion and no objections were provided, no concerns were raised. Thank you. Sorry, can I just check? Because you said you consulted the Environment Agency twice, or did you consult with Suffolk County Council's floods team twice? That's correct. Sorry, flood. Both. You did meet with the floods team and they said they had no comment to the application. It wasn't that they didn't respond, they had no comment. Uh, they had no comments. I emailed personally um, Jason Skilton because he's our flood and water officer 
and he didn't raise any objections. He did mention uh, a permit. That's not a planning consideration. It's not something that we would be assessing. Thank you. Any other questions at this point? No? Okay, members, so we've had all the information put before us. It's for us to discuss, debate, and to come to a conclusion. Yes, Councillor Muller. Thank you, Chair. Well, having sort of listened to what everyone's had to say and also sort of studying the documents, um, yes, I accept that some of the trees, etc., need to be removed, but apparently none of these have been identified as worthy of tree preservation orders. Um, it's also considered that the works would not have a significant adverse impact on the contribution of the group to the character of the surroundings. And obviously, highways have commented that um, they raised no objection to the proposal and uh, it provides adequate visibility and meets highway standards. And the engineers, specifications, etc., provides the proposed design is in accordance with good practice. So, in view of that, I'm minded to agree with the planning officer's conclusion in support of this application. Thank you. That wasn't. Councillor Eburn. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm undecided at the moment. I'm very concerned about this because the, um, you know, it's, it's unusual to have such a high proportion, you know, a quarter of a village objecting to an application and um, raising their concerns. And it is an extremely narrow piece of road when you look at the um, Google Maps and the, and the satellite images um, in the centre of the village. And it's well screened by trees and it's very rural. And this Carnza route, I mean, I think as well that needs to be used, you know, it, it, it needs to be used by vehicles and, and cars as it, as it was meant for before it falls into complete disrepair. Um, plus the fact that, you know, the, the, to drive to the bungalow, you only have to go past two houses to get to the bungalow. And if, if you're coming from the north, you're, you're coming that way anyway. And if you're coming from the south, you've got to, you know, do a U-turn past two houses. Um, but I think just in terms of the rural aspect and the fact that, you know, yes, I agree they could take the trees down if they wish to, but um, I suspect, um, you know, it would ruin the, the, the rural um, character of that, that part of the village. But so I'm kind of not really convinced at the moment on, on this. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a heart string versus planning, isn't it, on this? Um, Councillor Mansell. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, yes, I too um, think that this is, is more complex than it looks at, at first sight um, because, it, you know, it is a very rural lane and it's um, got a very, you know, a lot of trees on that side of, of the road. Now, and I think the issue about the 90 metres, I've just worked it out by looking at the plans on a slightly larger scale, uh, there is a 90 metre visibility splay, and I think the trees in the hedge will stay, but it is at the moment, or, or presumably, I, I've got a Google Street View picture up, there's obviously a lot of, uh, of um, extra growth and, that needs trimming on the verge, and that will have to go to create the visibility splay. Um, but it is a very rural setting. It's a very narrow road. I think I, I'm a bit concerned about um, what will come next, which obviously isn't part of this planning application, but there is clearly a motive to behind this, putting this bridge in. And as it stands at the moment, there is, I don't see there's any necessity to put a bridge in. Um, and, and there are a lot of objections from the community. It will change the view from the road. Um, and the, uh, uh, somebody raised the flooding issue, um, that it is in a flood zone, but then the existing Kanza route is also within that flood zone, so presumably that doesn't make an awful lot of difference. Um, but I, I have my doubts about the necessity of this at the moment, and I... And therefore, I'm less inclined to support it because it's not necessary and it is going to change the setting. Now, that whether they're planning matters or not is another, is another thing. But, um, you know, it, it, at the moment, I don't think the advantages of it outweigh the loss of the community, uh, loss of the uh, surround, you know, the, the view of the surroundings. So I'm... Uh, I'm I don't know where I'm going to go at the moment, but I do have my doubts about it. Councillor Haddington. 
Um, thank you. Um, I agree that any change is, um, is hard, but I think there are no planning um, reasons that we can stop this. They can take the trees down, whether we give them permission or not, and, um, and there are no significant, you know, frankly, planning harm that is going to go on here. And, and I think we have to support the officer, and I'm happy to propose that we um, agree with you and go through with this. It's proposed by Councillor Haddingham. Councillor Field, you're next. Yes, while well, I recognise that people could take the trees down, I'm not sure they would be motivated to do that unless they're trying to build a bridge. Um, I personally am somewhat concerned by the flooding issues in the, in the absence of a, a clear and positive statement from, from Jason Skilton. Uh, when you build a bridge, uh, a culvert in fact, in this case across a stream clearly in conditions of high flow the water tends to back up or it does if that bridge finishes up underwater and it's quite clear from the flood map that it would uh, so i have some concerns about the impact on uh, other houses that it would uh, will worsen flooding in the village how much well without a professional clear statement i find it difficult to judge so I am not in favour of this at this moment. Can I just chuck something in? Um, I know it's been already proposed by Councillor Haddingham, but um, there is an option that we defer it and ask the floods team for a full report so that we can actually base our decision with some floods guidance, because I think the lack of floods guidance in this area, where we know what's happening, uh, we've had no comment on something that is clearly an issue. So that's another option that we can put out there. Councillor Haddingham. Um, but surely, I just think there are other bridges for access for all those other properties, which are also in the flood zone. And, um, and so therefore, if Jason hasn't come back and said there's a problem, you know, why would there be a problem with flooding, with all these other culverts that are already clearly there? Are they upstream or downstream? Excuse me if I may answer. Yeah, yeah, no, there's both. Anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Muller. Thank you, Chair. I'm happy to second Councillor Haddingham's... Um Anyone else wish to speak? You want to come back, Councillor Haddingham? Yeah, can I, just, can I just, before you come back, I mean, for me, uh, this is a real difficult one because everything that Councillor Eburn says, I agree with, but the problem is none of those are planning reasons. And that's the fundamental problem I've got, is that um, I hear what the village says, uh, and clearly all their concerns and, the, and the, the, um, the, the fact that we've had a petition shows that there is you know, huge angst about this. But we here today cannot look at what may happen in the site after tomorrow, today. That would be a totally separate matter, nothing to be considered today. We're only here to look at the bridge and what is before us today. So, what may or may not happen in the future is speculation and irrelevant to this committee. Highways are 100% happy with the application. The floods team have been consulted and say they have no comment. Um, so I cannot find a sing and the uh, heritage people who actually uh, would comment about the listed building impact, again, have not raised any concern. So there isn't, I can't find one single planning reason to refuse the application, even though my heart is very sympathetic to what the parish is saying. We have to only look at planning reasons. So at the moment, I'm struggling to find any reasons to refuse this. Yep, Councillor Mayor, you were next. Then Councillor Manson. Sorry, then have we had no comment about the flooding, or have they failed to comment? Um, I think it's best for me to circulate the email that I received from Jason. I think that might well, we, uh, clarify we, sorry, the situation. Well, what does Jason say? He hasn't raised any objections to the proposal. So he has replied and says there's no objection. He has replied to my personal email, not through the consultation, not through, through the uh, formal consultation. He has emailed me back to direct me to a few websites, which I have done. But and, he and didn't. So, so just to be absolutely clear, he has replied in an email form to say he has no objections to this planning application. He has directed me to the places that I could find further information with regards to this. Uh, he has just confirmed it's within the flood zone, which is something that we knew from our mapping. It is within the flood zone two and three partially. 
Thank you. You just, can you just tell me what we're supposed to do? Because I'm, I'm not 100% convinced. If I've heard uh, Marcel, she's cho quite properly chosen her words carefully. It, it, she, he didn't respond within the consultation process. I'm reading that the officer was a bit concerned and wanted to make absolutely sure that it hadn't been administratively overlooked. So she quite properly sent a personal email and got a reply back saying, indicating that he had indeed was aware of the consultation and that effectively he had nothing official to say, but directed you to the government website. So I think, I hope I haven't got that. That's, right. that's correct, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, Councillor Taylor. Um, in light of the declaration of the climate emergency and biodiversity emergency, do, 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 is there anything? That's not it? a planning consideration. It's nothing? It's not a planning matter. Okay. It's only the planning, the, 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 as we were through the training that we've had, it's so only it has those, no impact has no impact, I'm afraid. Councillor Mansour. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, page 22 of our papers, and in paragraph 10.3, it says that the proposed bridge, by virtue of its nature, scale and style, is not considered to unduly erode the amenity enjoyed by the neighbouring properties. The very fact that we've had a petition, presumably signed by many of the occupants of the neighbouring properties, perhaps... Um, eroding amenity enjoyed is a subjective matter and the neighbouring the occupiers of the neighbouring properties obviously feel that it is going to erode their amenity it's subjective therefore it's not as clear cut you can't just say oh it's not going to because they're obviously concerned that there is going to be some harm and it, I, I, all I'm saying is it's, a, it's very subjective um, and that is related the office view on that who's written this let's just see what they say yeah thank you sir yes and that's why i assess it as not significantly so there will be some impact however not significant enough to warrant a refusal thank you but but all i'm saying I, i'm just trying to say that that the officer feels it's insignificant yeah i mean the obviously any pro yeah. properties the neighboring owners that's the same with every application yeah i know obviously think it is significant because they've gone to the trouble of doing a petition so uh, uh, you know you could argue that that in someone's eyes it is significant but that's, can I and just therefore say, yeah. that might give you a reason for refusal that's, that's, that's what, what we I'm do trying to say. yeah Councillor Master, that's what we do with every application we weigh up we have to weigh up the harm It's a subjective argument. The officer has come to one decision. There's nothing to stop us coming to another decision because it's a subjective argument. It's, on that particular item, it's subjective, yes, but not on the other points. Uh, Councillor Mansell. I'm really sorry, Eben. <laughs> um, thank you, Chair. I, I think you'd look at policies um, protecting existing residential immunity would be, be, be one and development appropriate to its setting. And I, I'm concerned the heritage um, team haven't responded um, to this consultation either, although the, um, the, the comment is a double negative um, in the report, which implies that it is um, a, a significant um, arm to the um, Grade 2 listed building, but I'm sure that's not what the officer means. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yes, no, I think it, it could be, you know, those are, those are factors that could. And I just, again, I just say I am concerned that, you know, that people that live in this area are living there because of its ex in, intensive rural setting and therefore protecting their existing re residential amenity could be a reason here. Thank you. Well, we, we, we have a proposal and a seconder. Based on what happens with that, uh, let's see what happens with that vote first. Uh, and then, um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, I think a lot of the people who signed the petition are much more worried about the potential development factor behind this, which we're not here to look at today. I think all those people that signed that thing have been told, oh, they're going to develop it, they're going to put houses in there, which, you know, who knows if that's true, but this is not what we're looking at today. And I think that's what most people will be worried about, the future, which we're not here to discuss today. So it's been proposed and seconded by uh, Councillor Haddingham, seconded by Councillor Muller, as per the recommendation. All those in favour of the recommendation, can we have a show of hands, please? Two. Those against? And abstentions? 
I would like to put a proposal forward uh, that we defer this application and ask for a report from the heritage team and we ask for a report from the floods team that comes back with it to help us make a more informed decision. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Field. Anyone wish to speak on that? All those in favour? Those against? One, two, three. One and an abstention? One. <laughs> okay. So it is deferred and it will come back with uh, more information. Okay. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is DC 19-00647, Land off Green Road, Woolpit. Uh, and Alex is to present the application. And Councillor Eburn's just going to leave, and Councillor Mansell's going to move over there. You're more than welcome to stay as you wish or leave as you wish, Councillor. <laughs> Okay, Alex, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, members, uh, this is application reference DC 19 and the application proposes amendments to the design and layout of uh, 49 dwellings and garages and cart lodges on land to the east side of Green Road in, uh, in Woolpit. The host uh, planning application reference to double one Two, forward slash 16 was refused by uh, the council's refer referrals committee in September 2017. However, it was then appealed and the planning inspectorate uh, sought to uh, grant planning permission in September 2018. And the relevant papers are uh, provided in the uh, bundle for your, uh, for your reference. Uh, onto the presentation. Um, this is the uh, location of the proposal site, edged in red for you there, on the south of the village, and an aerial map closer in. Uh, the constraints, um, the major constraint is, do we have a point? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. It's the public footpath which runs along the eastern boundary of the site, connecting into the existing estate roads here. Um, we also have a, a listed building here at uh, Priory Cottage, and um, not shown uh, is another listed building, um, which is uh, just off the road there, so they're the major constraints for you. This is the site location plan submitted with the application. And um, this is just uh, for comparison. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have the layout approved by the inspector on the left-hand side and what is currently proposed on the, on the right-hand side. Now, um, what is proposed um, is, uh, in our view, not significant. Um, there are a few uh, minor changes to locations of dwellings, um, most significantly this dwelling in the corner of the site. However, it does push it a little bit further away from the southern boundary, and uh, these dwellings are moving forward a little bit here this dwelling a little bit further to the corner um, and you'll notice the size of the garages a little bit larger and being set uh, all back in the site, uh, particularly in this location. The, the, uh, the major scale and form of the buildings uh, is, not, is not changing and uh, the, uh, the f affordable dwellings are uh, not changing at all. Uh, those are highlighted in blue on that plan. Um, so just for uh, um, yeah, uh, confirmation, that is uh, what is now proposed, Vision K. And zooming in on the north section and the 
southern section of Hawaii. Um, and these, uh, well, this is the most uh, significant change, I believe, to be proposed. Um, so what we have for you is on the left-hand side, what was approved by the inspector, on the right-hand side, what is now proposed. So we had formerly cart lodges uh, with one car parking space and storage. Uh, what is now proposed is uh, a little bit larger, um, full, fully enclosed garages with two car parking spaces. Um, and they're in accordance with uh, advisory parking standards uh, by Suffolk County Council Highways. Um, therefore, they could be used for uh, parking spaces. And uh, other new garages proposed. Uh, this larger garage, um, only one parking space with uh, quite a bit of storage. There are two of those proposed on the site, and the others, the remainder, will be single garages. Again, uh, in accordance with uh, County Highways parking standards, so they could potentially be used as parking spaces. And then on to uh, what is changing in terms of the proposed elevations. On the, uh, on the right, as I go through, is what's been approved and, oh, sorry, on the left is what's been approved. On the right is what is now proposed. So um, it's a case of spot the difference, really, the, uh, the scale and the form not changing, just um, a little bit in terms of uh, fenestrational layout and design. Can you just explain what the difference is? Um, well, yes, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, the projecting window in this location is being removed. That is now flush. Um, they're removing sections of boarding from the front and rear elevations. Um, the rear window is now being changed to a, a rear door to allow uh, rear access. And um, the, um, the side uh, elevation window, just a little bit smaller in this location. That's really it. Um, internal layout, um, again, very minor alterations um, in terms of uh, you know, the bathroom and uh, internal cupboards, nothing really significant. And then there's that external door, which I mentioned earlier, giving access. Uh, that's a common theme throughout. Um, and I'll just uh, uh, briefly go through those for you now. Um, that's house type two. Again, minor elevational changes there. Again, internal layout, um, very insignificant changes, I'd say, internal cupboards, um, bathroom, main changes there. Um, these are the elevations which um, are not proposing, the only ones which are proposing, and that's uh, one of the affordable uh, terraces. Um, this is the affordable terrace which uh, is proposed to, uh, to change. The scale and form will remain the same. However, variations in windows so I've got a narrow window um, as proposed. And um, again, rear access patio doors proposed um, in lieu of uh, the uh, windows which were unopenable. Access to the rear gardens proposed there. And uh, that is shown on the, on the layout. In fact, I think that's the only change on that particular one. Um, and this is uh, house type four, so a window actually being removed uh, from the side elevation of this one. Uh, and boarding being removed, rear access doors, a smaller window on the side. Um, apologies for this, but uh, I'm go going through this <laughs> with a fine tooth comb. Um, this is uh, house, time, house type 5.1, and um, as you can see, window types changing, scale and form remaining as approved, and the rear access doors there. This is 5.2, which is the uh, same internal layout, but just a different uh, roof design. Um, again, minimal changes, just the rear access door on that one, and uh, proposed layout, which is in the main not changing. House type six, again the windows, major changes there, rear access door, and the proposed uh, layout, changing the staircase, we'll get back. 
Case type 7. Yeah, again, minimal changes there. It's the rear access door. That's shown on the uh, proposed floor plans as well. And house type 8.1, which are the flats. 8.2, again, flats. And the, uh, the floor plans. This is house type 9. And again, the floor plans. Changes and the street scene and uh, boundary elevations uh, as proposed. And this is uh, changed insignificantly from what the inspector has approved. We think um, no significant impact on uh, landscape setting, settings of listed buildings. In fact, um, as I've shown on the layout, uh, one of the dwellings was actually being moved further away from the southern boundary. And uh, again, the other elevations across the landscape and street scene. And the photographs, this is uh, from the, uh, uh, the south, uh, southwest corner of the site, um, looking up Green Road and moving around to the right from that uh, last uh, slide and the site boundary uh, would square off uh, the field in that location. That's probably a better so no further than that uh, existing dwelling there. And this is the uh, listed building at um, Priory Cottage directly across um, Green Road from the site. And the uh, listed building across the field to the south at Grange Farm. And then looking across the road in the opposite direction, existing dwellings in the distance. And this is the existing footpath uh, to the rear of dwellings to the east. And some uh, screen grabs uh, showing you the approach into Woolpit. That concludes the presentation. As per your papers, officer recommendation for approval. Thank you. Can I just ask a question? Um, often when uh, changes this, I mean, if it was a smaller number of houses and the changes were happening, would it come back to committee? Because often you can make, I mean, you, we see it the whole time. I, you, know, you see stuff in our, the wards we represent. You get, and that's something that's come through. And it says minor, minor changes to the application. Is this just because of the scale that it's having to come back here? Uh, yes, it's over 15 dwellings. Um, they are changes which are above what could be considered non-material. Therefore, okay. it's a full Section 73 application um, scheme of delegation over 15. It needed to come back. I did check that. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I know it's by the by, Alex, because they, they've been approved anyway, but on house type one, two, and three, uh, and four, what are the materials of the walls? They're not going to be grey, are they? Um, no, they would be uh, light brown. Buff bricks, oh, right. which was uh, Thank you. considered by the inspector. Any questions at this point? Yeah, Councillor Miller. Yeah. Um, Alex, um, it says in here that obviously the additional design elements have been included comprising refuge recycling points and electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Do we know how many ch electrical charging points there are going to be for vehicles on this? Um, yes, that is uh, proposed by way of uh, conditions. It's something we've assessed already actually in the discharge of uh, conditions application and that will be within um, all the proposed garages would have electric charging points. Yeah. Uh, we don't have anyone from the parish council, we don't have an objective support, but we have the applicant. Uh, Leslie Short, if you'd like to come up. And again, uh, to the three minutes, please. Good morning, members of the committee. I'm Leslie Short from Artisan Planning, and I represent the applicants, Landex, the developer of this site. The application before you today has been with the council since February the 8th, during which time its contents have not been the subject of substantive objection. The proposal and assessment of it is neatly summarized in paragraph 6.1 of your officer's report. The changes to the design are minor, 
inconsequential and have no adverse impact. And so I trust that you too will find them acceptable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? No? Thank you very much. I think that's the shortest uh, um, presentation we've had. So we move on uh, to the two board members. We have Councillor Sarah Mansell and Councillor Helen Geek. We, Councillor Mansell, over to you. Uh, thank you. Um, now, despite this being a, uh, a, a controversial and unpopular development within Woolpit itself, um, these, as has been said several times already, these are only minor changes. Um, and in fact, I think the most significant changes appear, it was a case of spot the difference on the diagrams, um, that uh, the major changes to the garaging seems to be in the corner that's furthest away from any existing properties, so I can't really see that it's going to cause any issues. Um, and the odd bathroom door seems to be opening the opposite way. Um, not quite sure what, what significance that's got. Um, you could actually argue that, that changing a single cart lodge into a double garage is a benefit because you're getting an extra parking space. And the fact that they're going to have uh, electric charging points is a, is a bonus as well. Um, so I really can't see any problems with this. And I, I, I'm actually, I actually, when I read the papers, assumed that this had been brought to committee because it is such a controversial site and there have been some errors made on, on the conditions which are not relevant to this application at all. But I thought perhaps that's why it's been brought to committee because there's been so much publicity and um, issues raised about it before. But in this particular application, uh, very no objections, and um, I can't really see it's causing it a lot of problem. Thank you very much. Uh, and is that, have you heard from Councillor Geek? We haven't had any communication. No, I, um, no. I, I don't think she's got any, anything further to say, any further comments or objections or anything. Thank you. Okay, any questions for the ward member? Nope. Members, over to us to discuss, debate, and come to a decision. Councillor Haddingham. Um, I think, uh, well, I agree with everything that's been said. They're very minor, they've got little effect on the design, and so um, I'm happy to propose that we go along with the officer's recommendation to approve this. Councillor Muller. Thank you, Chair. I'm happy to second um, Councillor Haddingham's um, that we actually agree with this and go with the officer's recommendation. Anyone else wish to comment before we go to a vote? All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, there are no site inspections, no other urgent business, so we close the meeting at 10.40. Thank you very much.